out there, Peabody here, and that is my trusty boy, Sherman. Hi! Who will assist me in our next exciting adventure back into history. Shall I set the Wayback Machine, Mr. Peabody? Please do, Sherman, but I suggest you use both hands, for we are going way back for the way back this time, to the year 50,000 B.C., to be exact. 50,000 B.C.? That is correct, and the place will be Neanderthal, near Dusseldorf, where we shall meet the first caveman. Sherman and I entered the way back and were instantly whirled back in time to the period when the fourth glacial age was rising toward its maximum. But no sooner had we arrived than I immediately realized that something was amiss. Mr. Peabody, we're moving. What's happening? I think that if you will look down, Sherman, you will see that we happen to be on a very precarious perch. Which, now that I think about it, was probably the understatement of the year. Yipe! Well, at that moment, the great beast passed beneath a large tree. So, instructing Sherman to follow my example, I grasped the nearest limb and we swung to safety. Phew, that was a close one. We then prepared to climb down from the tree, but we suddenly heard a strange sound. Ooga, ooga, mift. Mift, mift, too. Oh, what's that? Offhand, I would say that we are not alone in this tree. Moop, moop, nip, boop. Mif, 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 mif. We're in luck, Sherman. There is the perfect example of Homo neanderthalensis. You mean cavemen? Well, obviously not cavemen after living in this tree. We were unable to understand what they were saying, but we watched them closely from our vantage point. I get nun moved, ok it flap. No, it split soap. Aga I get nun moved. Split om frog nit nif. Napa, napa, let's cram um on top. Sheesh. What was that all about? It would seem to indicate they realize there's a better way of life than living in a tree. Come, Sherman, we'll follow them and see what develops. And what developed was most interesting indeed, for in their first attempt to find a better place to live, they passed right by a perfectly good cave and squeezed under, of all things, a wet rock. Once more passing the cave, they next tried a gopher hole, but the gopher objected, and those prehistoric gophers could be quite objectionable. In the next few hours, they tried to live in everything from bushes and brambles to stumps and hollow logs, but still didn't give the cave a second look. I used the Yang Na Indian hand signs in an attempt to explain the merits of living in a cave. They still don't get it, Mr. Peabody. Maybe if I go into the cave, they'll get the idea. No, no. But before I could stop him, Sherman was in the cave. But not for long. <laughs> Mr. Peabody, there's a saber-toothed tiger in that cave. I noticed that, Sherman. It's no wonder those two wouldn't go inside. Gee, they'll never become cavemen at this rate. Yes, they will, Sherman. It's a simple matter of getting the saber-toothed tiger out so they can go in. Simple? Quiet, Sherman. Come. Pulling up a very special bush that I'd happened to notice earlier, I tied it to one end of a long vine and instructed Sherman to tie a large round boulder to the other. Next, I tossed the bush into the cave and signaled to Sherman to roll the boulder down the hill. As it rolled, it pulled the bush after it. And, as I knew it would, the saber-toothed tiger bounded out of the cave, happily following the bush down the hill until he was lost from sight. Hooray! You did it, Mr. Peabody! But... How did you know the tiger would follow that bush? Elementary, my dear Sherman. That bush happened to be Nepita, or more commonly known as the catnip. The tiger, being all cats, found it impossible to resist. And now, being free to enter the cave, our two friends quickly did so and immediately set up light cave keeping. At last! They're now real cavemen, huh, Mr. Peabody? Yes, and others were soon to follow their example. Soon everybody was living in caves. But this brought another problem that man had to face, the paying of taxes. Taxes? Wow, that is a big problem. Of course, Sherman. We all know that everything is big in taxes. It never fails to amaze me how he can stand there and say such corny things with such a straight face. Oh, God, I soon fits. <laughs>